Hello. We uh we're doing it. How we doing? Welcome to the show. Robbie Rose show that is. I have really exciting news. Um I think I mentioned it on last podcast, but uh the ebook that I've been working on for two years is is done. It's done. It's it's on site. It's ready to be bought. I guess I should say it's ready to be purchased because that's more professional like. But uh, I'll include the link in the show notes. Um, if you are not a member to my website yet, the um, then you should be because members get a 25% discount. So until you become a member, I can't give you that discount. But if you do sign up, if you become a member, it's free, there's no charge. You actually, A, get access to all my content on my website, and B, you get that 25% discount on that new book, A Complete Guide to Pitching Mechanics, 188 pages on something that it takes no more than two, three seconds to complete, so that's cool. Um, all right, so what are we talking about today? I had a request the other day, I think in an IG Q&A. Um, talking about velocity and the individual was wondering my personal velocity journey and it's a really good question and it's a really cool story um, I probably have talked about it in the past on like a my journey breakdown thing um, but I actually just want to focus on the velocity aspect of it so my journey with velocity is interesting it's not absolute meaning like the things that i did do um have done in the past you know to attribute to velocity uh it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to work for you so take everything that i'm about to say with a grain of salt i'm actually not even going to emphasize any like teaching points i don't think within this this episode i'm more so just going to like give my journey but maybe you can take something from it, maybe not, who knows. So I do need to preface this by saying like, from a genetic standpoint, I, I was, I'm was i very lucky, I'm very fortunate. Um, Pops played in the show, played 10 years professionally. Um, so obviously the, the athletic, you know, <laughs> capabilities and the physical side of it is there. Um, so, I actually wasn't a quote unquote pitcher. And this is crazy because I remember this like it was yesterday until a specific day at practice. I was on the Marlins eight years old the year before we went to like the major league. So for us, it was minor league was like, uh, I think it was seven or maybe it was just seven and eight years old. Usually it was seven, eight, nine, ten, but majors you had to be at least nine to play, but it was nine through twelve, and then thirteen through fifteen was like the Babe Ruth you played on the bigger field. I don't know if that's normal around the globe, but uh, I was eight years old, um, and I remember coming to practice one day and was like, "I want to pitch." So remember, my dad was a catcher, so I grew up like that was just what my brother and I did. We just caught, uh, we had a bunch of catcher's gloves around the house, we had a, a bunch of bats and balls, so like just naturally we gravitated towards being a catcher, being a position player. So I remember, again, that practice, eight years old, this Marlins team, man, um, and know that like my, my mom and dad coached my brother, who's three years older than me. So when I was eight, he was 11. He was in the major leagues on the Blue Jays, and they were coaching that team. So they didn't they didn't coach me uh, in the minor league team. Um, I don't know if that's relevant, but it gives you context to the story. <laughs> so eight years old, I showed up, and I was like, I, I want to pitch. And everyone was like, whoa, dude, what? Like, you, you want to pitch? And now remember, I was just a big kid. I don't remember exactly there's probably a picture around this office that I'm in somewhere of my like team. But if you looked at like all my team pictures, I was always like the tallest one, like taller than the coaches, um, peaked at 18, <laughs> but I was super tall, super big. Um, so that's when I started like being a considered, I, I would say like a pitcher. And then that next year, nine, 
I got to play with my brother who was known to be a catcher and I got to play under my dad, which was a tough, like it was a t kind of a tough year because, you know, you deal with that whole like dynamic of the father, uh, coach, you know, aspect of it, especially me being nine, like the youngest kid in the actual league, it was hard to get reps. Um, but I did. And then I, I actually would say that that year was super important, super critical to my pitching endeavors because I, I was overmatched like at the plate. Um, so really like the times that I did play was when I was pitching and I wasn't really overmatched like pitching wise. So nine years old, I want to say at, at nine years old, I was like, no, I don't even remember. I don't even want to say like height and weight. This is my velocity journey. So just stay with me guys. So at nine years old, we, again, I'm from a small town and this is kind of going to be, it's so different nowadays than it was back then. Like back then it was like, you didn't need a radar gun and we didn't have access to radar guns to determine if you were throwing hard. Like the hitters were going to tell you that like by the time, like if you're overmatching them, like, oh, this guy throws hard. It sounds hard. And like, look at the hitters. He's striking everyone out on three pitches. Like, that was the thing. Um, and the mound was super close, wasn't it? In Little League, it's crazy. Excuse me. So I remember, we'll skip all the way ahead. All right. So I got gave you context in terms of like the pitching like journey. So I obviously was a pitcher at nine and then just every year I was like still being a pitcher, but like, it wasn't really a, a PO type thing. It was just like, I was doing everything, but, um, I always threw good. Like I always had a good arm. I give a lot of credit to my dad, obviously, like he in, instilled in this, like this, what to do mentality as a pitcher, like what the, what to do in terms of things to work on, like things you want to do. Um, I'll never forget. It was that year, actually at nine years old, he introduced me to the five pound dumbbells and like he would, he wouldn't force me. He would just encourage me like, Hey, before you go to bed every night, five pound dumbbells, give me 10 reps, YTIs, like gave me a shoulder routine, you know, and like all this stuff. And I, I've, Dude, I did it like every single night, all the way up until probably senior year of high school. It's crazy. So um, fast forward all the way to 12 years old. Reason we're going to stop here in the story is because we had one of those baseballs that had the pitch speed on it. I don't know if you guys remember this. Um, a lot of you guys are probably pretty young, but back in my day, we didn't have like a pocket radar. We didn't have all these like, you know, pitch logic balls or, or all these means to get like a, a velocity. So <laughs> we had this ball and who knows how accurate it was. But uh, I remember throwing with that ball when I was 12 years old. And, and Grant, when I was 12 years old, I think I was like, I remember, I remember the, the team picture. Cause that, that was like what stood out to me. My dad's six, two. And I remember being like a little bit shorter than he was. That was like a big deal. I'm <laughs> passing my dad in height. But, um, and I remember throwing, I think it was like 80 miles an hour on that little ball. Um, again, it's probably not accurate, but I always, I was one of those guys that was always am always super curious about things. So like I would watch the little league world series every year from when I was nine all the way to 12 and like, Oh, they had the velocity there. Right. Like that was the big thing. Like, Oh, th that guy's throwing 65. Like, Oh, that guy's throwing 70. So, I mean, unfortunately I was never able to get like a real gun, like a, a stalker or whatever, um, to measure my entire little league. But I, I will say the first official reading for velocity, that I got was when I was 13 and kind of the same principle to when I was nine playing with my brother at 12 was when I was 13, I was finally like able to play on the big field and my brother was 16 and my, my dad coached a, uh, you know, we would play, we wouldn't play year round baseball, but we would play pretty close to year round. We would never play in the winter because that was basketball season. So we played like fall ball. And I remember we would go to like Sacramento, which was a, you know, a big deal for us because we're from a really small Northern California town. So going to Sacramento and playing against other competition, you know, Northern California was a big deal. So when I was 13, kind of the same thing, I wouldn't really play unless it was pitching. And that was at the age where I like, I think I said it on a recent podcast, actually, where I started to learn how to pitch, started to learn how to like change speeds, get crafty a little bit, started to put more emphasis on, you know, a secondary pitch. It was very good for me, obviously not having to just rely, like I'm being 12 years old in little league. I like, you know, overmatch everyone. Um, and it was just throw fastballs, whatever. 
So 13, it was uh, it was like a consolation championship of this fall ball tournament, and uh, the pitcher for the other team was like getting recruited, maybe recruited, maybe scouted. I'm not quite sure, but uh, there was a guy that was doing the recruiting or scouting, and he had a radar gun. And I remember just being super juiced for that opportunity. Um, and, you know, like I, this is my first time. So I remember like just letting it eat and, and it felt like it was the hardest I had ever been throwing 13 years old. Um, and that was my first official reading. At, I think it was like 83 miles an hour. So when I was 13, what is that? Seventh grade, eighth grade. I'm not really sure on that. Yikes. But, um, ever since that day, right? So like 13, say I was in eighth, I want to say 13 is eighth grade. No, because 12 would have been sixth grade, right? So let's say seventh grade. I don't know. Anyways, not super important to the context of the story. I don't think. Anyways, after I got that official reading, I was like, okay, boom. And I was always uh, the kid with like the whiteboard in my room. And I would like write down like cool things, motivational quotes and whatever, like total nerd, even though I'm still that same guy with the whiteboard right there. <laughs> so I remember writing on that day, right? It was, so it was the fall, say like September 4th of, you know, 2000, whatever, four it was, I don't remember, but I had like 83 written down and that was like the big thing. And again, I had... Uh, a father who played and went through like kind of the politics side of it too. So he had an understanding of like, okay, well, if you want to like take this seriously and you want an opportunity to, to play baseball for a living and you want to be a pitcher, you got to throw hard, right? Like that's going to give you your opportunity. So, and then the story goes, man, um, I, I got really fortunate again with uh, the, the coolest opportunity because my brother had gotten drafted out of high school. So when he was 18, I was 15. It was my sophomore year. Sorry, freshman year going into my sophomore year and it was like kind of the same you know in the fall type thing so when he got drafted in the summer that was when they had like the draft and follows and like they had that long period of time so like when he got drafted out of high school he was kind of an unknown and so he had to do like a lot of you know kind of workouts and stuff with the rockies in that period of time and we got really close with their area scout so me being you know uh it was like 14 or 15 years old like I was just, I w I'd always go to these places, you know, and it was always like a far trip for us to being from a small town. So I got to, I got the opportunity to actually participate in a lot of these like workouts, uh, post-draft workouts yeah, that my brother was in. And it even got to the point where his last one, I think we did like three or four of them, his last one, like I was actually a main, like a main thing in the workout because they wanted to see is like receiving and I had to throw a bullpen. So meanwhile, like I'm getting work in, but like, you know, the area scout of the Colorado Rockies, and then they would bring in like the national cross checker. Like they're seeing me too, like at 15 or 14. And, um, so they would gun me and I remember being like 85 and then I got, uh, uh, another opportunity with that connection because I got the invite to play on the scout team, which is a fall ball for the Colorado Rockies, who was managed by that area scout that we got pretty close with. So usually people don't play in that scout league until like their last year, you know, like 17 going into their senior season. I started playing that going into my sophomore year. So I started playing it when I was 16 or 15, 16 and 17. So I got three years of that. And that was a big deal. Again, in the Sacramento Delta area, um, central California, maybe, but that was like every, every two weeks, maybe. No, I think it was every weekend, every weekend we would leave Saturday morning. It was like a three hour trip, but that was when like my whiteboard progression started. Um, so I being at like 16 years old, going there, we would always, you know, my mom would sit in the stands and she would ask like the scouts, like, hey, what's that little freaking tall, skinny, long haired kid throwing? So it was like 85. Um, and I would do it like every weekend, but it was sophomore year. It was like highest was 85 junior year. That was when I like, I remember this so vividly, man, this is cool. It was, uh, say, say we played like seven games or eight games or maybe it was like less than that. It was like six. Cause I remember my whiteboard wasn't that big, but I had like six games. So six weekends in a row. And it was like, my biggest goal was like, I just wanted to go up one mile an hour. And I remember starting that junior year, say like 86. 
and I, I kid you not, like I, every weekend, I think I like up one. Um, and then my last, my last opportunity that, that going into, um, my senior year. So this was junior fall. I, I think, uh, I hit 91. I think, I think it was junior year. Could have been, it wouldn't have been sophomore year. No, it's like junior year going into senior year. I think, <laughs> but it was whatever it is, 91, say my junior year. Um, and then the, the big test, and this is like, I wish I took a picture, but we didn't have like smartphones back then. Like I should have took a picture on my razor flip phone of that whiteboard though. Cause it was like every fall, it was the same thing. And like, that was the only way that we would get radared was if we would, you know, go to these big showcase type things. And I think it was that same no, it would have been during the summer going into my senior year. During that same time frame, I was uh, actually playing in an AAU basketball. Like you got to remember, like I was—I didn't know if I was a baseball player or a basketball player at this time. Um, so I was playing AAU basketball, and then the opportunity to play in the area codes came, and that's like kind of what put me on the map. But I remember being in the area codes, kind of panicking, like "Holy shoot! Like I haven't." <laughs> I haven't thrown much, you know, um, cause I was playing basketball, but we got to the area codes. They, uh, I didn't make my actual area team. Like our area in Northern California was supposed to be the brewers. I, I made the A's team cause they needed pitching, but that was the same connection that I had through that area scout. That was my brother and blah, blah, blah. So you get the picture of how it is about all who you know. Right. Um, but you're a doctor. <laughs> so played in the area codes. Um, and that was like what put me on the map, on the map because I was up to 93, I think, 90, yeah, 93 or 94. I want to say 93 um, going into my senior year, like senior year hadn't started yet. So and then I got another opportunity to play in like what's called the Mariner Cup uh, in Seattle where all these scouts were. And everyone's kind of like, who is this kid? Because, you know, he's like from a small town, like no one really knew. And I remember that after that area code game, like I was getting all these text messages on my dope flip phone. Like, dude, you were just throwing this, like, you know, where you committed. I hadn't committed to a college. I was like, sure. I don't know if I'm going to be a basketball player or a baseball player. But yeah, I was up to say like 93 on area codes. Um, and then I had to actually leave area codes early to go finish my basketball tournament. So then I got that opportunity in the Mariner Cup. And I remember having a meeting with that area scout from the Rockies right before the start of my senior season or not senior season, but senior year. And he was like, it's about to get really hectic for you. He's like, you're about to enter an absolute circus. I was like, what do you mean? He's like, you, you know, you're one of the guys in this area, right? So like every area, every section has like their area scouts and you know compile a list before the the baseball season starts of like all right who's our guys to go watch blah 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 and he's like you're at the top the other guy at the top um was just like dead set on committing to college and i was like let's go i want to be a ball player you know so i got a lot of and i'll never forget that first outing my senior year fresh out of basketball season and it was like warming up in the outfield to play catch there's like 50 scouts behind and i was like and when they had mentioned that there's going to be scouts come to your town and watch you play like this small town this city park right like i post all my instagram videos at i'm like no way they're not going to come here that's silly and sure enough dude they did and it was crazy but um they all kind of knew i think they did a good job um because like again being a basketball player they knew I was going to get off to a somewhat slow start. And I think that's what I did. I like my first outing was like, you know, I was at 88, 90. And again, those showcases are so different. And this is, this will provide more context to how I still am to this day. Showcases, you're throwing two innings tops, three innings tops, and you can kind of let it eat. Right. Um, and I, I, I've always thrown harder knowing like subconsciously that I'm not going to be out there long. Like as a starter, I think just something about it is like, oh, I'm going to go there. I'm going to set these guys up a little bit passive, but passively aggressive. And uh, I've just never, historically speaking, thrown hard as like a starter. So those showcases, you know, being two to three innings, like let the big dog eat, my velocity was up. But those first few outings, my senior season, like they knew I was fresh off of basketball. I was like 88, 92, touch 93, which was great. But um, it wasn't until like I started like getting warm, <laughs> getting warm, the weather was getting warm, er, and uh, started getting into the swing of things that I think 
at some points in the the senior season would hit like a 94 hit a 95 i'll never forget this is crazy like i, I was talking to someone the other day and i was throwing at my old high school field and i was like gosh it feels like yesterday and it really does dude and it's been 12 years since i graduated that's crazy and i can still remember that i literally remember like because my dad didn't coach me in high school baseball and he would come over to like the dugout during uh, the half innings where i wasn't hitting but I was pitching that game and he'd be like, all right, you're at 93. Like you got to spend, you know, two pitches next inning, like just grip and rip, let the thing eat. We got to get you a 94. We got to get you, you know, and I remember one game specifically that there was like the most scouts ever. There was like 60 scouts. Um, and that's kind of one of the biggest games that I think, you know, really put me on the map of getting drafted high. And it was like every inning, I went up like a mile an hour, started like 88, finished at like 94, 95, I think. But yeah, so my velocity journey actually got even, I, I mean, my velocity journey didn't get interesting until I got the pro ball. Because once I got the pro ball, you know, I got drafted 88th overall in 2010. Um, once I got to pro ball, I was introduced to a totally different way of throwing slash training. Less is more. They say, save your bullets. And this will be good for next week's podcast episode. When I talk about how and why I throw so much, because when I was introduced to this, like you got to save your bullets mentality, I think your boy went downhill quick in terms of velocity. Uh, my first year, my rookie year at 18, that was probably one of my better years of professional baseball. There was, there'd be outings like I would sit in that 88, 92 range cruise. Um, but like, you know, every weird opportunity I'd flash a 95, um, you know, and, and it was like the whole projectable thing too, right? Because like I had never really just focused solely on baseball. I'd always played basketball. I'd always mix time. I never really, my dad never let me touch a weight growing up and all throughout high school. So like, that was like a big thing when scouts would come to the house and they would ask about it. And I, and he'd be like, yeah, I haven't let him touch a weight like that. What you see is, you know, all natural, blah, blah, blah. And they're like, Ooh, he's going to get bigger, stronger. Oh, projectability. <laughs> so funny thinking back at it. But, um, so 18 and then 19, my velo dropped again, the whole less is more mentality killed me. And don't take any of what I'm about to say in the next like five, 10 minutes as like, oh, he's making excuses because I'm, I'm really not trying to. It's just the way it happened and the reality of everything. Um, 19 velocity dropped. I was like, I'd be 87 to 90 in games. Um, and then, but at that time, it was 2011. At that time, it was like, yeah, velocity was a big deal. Like people would point it out, but it wasn't like you're going to lose your job because you're not throwing hard. It was like, it, you're getting freaking your tits lit. So you're going to lose your job. That was what's interesting about like nowadays and then back then. And again, I didn't have access, even when I would come home and train for the off season, I wouldn't have access um, to like a radar gun, you know, still. So I still really didn't know. I would always base it off of like my long toss distance of like where I was currently at at that time and kind of what did I needed to focus on. And then 2020 is I made this mechanical adjustment, mechanical change in, in actually the end of the 2011 season in, in instructs with the diamondbacks and I dropped my slot and that was weird. I remember like telling or not telling myself, but thinking like I couldn't long toss anymore because when I long toss and did pull downs, like I did those ever since I was like 12 even before that, but, uh, I felt like I couldn't do it anymore from the lower slot. So I kind of just stopped that off season and tried to just master like the, the consistency at release and just try to get a feel for it. And then I went into the spring training of, of 2012, same spring training. I got traded in with my velocity really down like 85, 86, but everyone in that time frame usually like had velo issues going into camp. Like, it's not like it is nowadays when you go into camp and like, you need to like win a job. It was kind of like you went into camp, like I'm a 50% in shape, <laughs> but, um, and then I got traded that spring training, went to Pittsburgh, developed, you know, or like really established myself as like a sinker, sinker guy. And, um, velocity was kind of just completely out of the equation. And that was when I had my best year in 2012, got to low a, um, starter all year, I'd be like 88, 92, but I'd have this sinker. And it was kind of like that same passive aggressive mindset. Like I never really fixated myself on the velocity thing until I remember going to instructs with Pittsburgh that same year. And I was up to 94, 95 with sink 
and they were like, and but it was one of those things in instructs you don't you don't like throw five, six, seven innings, right? You're throwing like two innings, get your work in. And I think that's the, that's the funny thing that I think about nowadays is like, man, this is historically, this has just been me. It's call it subconscious, whatever. Um, so it was like an emphasis. Then I was like, oh, I can do it. But then I remember going into that off season and totally jacked myself up because it was like, I was, I was focusing on like, so many different things to influence even more velocity and that jacked me up going like I've, I've been very vocal about my years in 13 14 um very very bad years for for your boy i don't even know if i want to dive into it but you can check out the com slash about i think it is um and i go into the whole journey but then in uh, the off season, after I got released by Pittsburgh, that was when it was like time to shine because I was like, I'm going back to how I was in high school. Like enough of this freaking save your bullets crap. Like I'm going to be throwing from the shortstop. I'm going to be throwing from center field. I'm going to be doing all these athletic things. I'm going to be long tossing because Pittsburgh took my long toss away. Um, and like no disrespect to that organization, they have their way of going about it. But I just remember like thinking like that, this is not for me. Like throughout that time that I was there, like my velocity just kept getting lower and lower. And it was like, not really an accident of why this was happening for me, personal identification, right? Knowing what it takes for you to be at your best. And that's another byproduct of why I'm so such an advocate for identifying that early. So then that off season going into the 2015 season, I was a free agent. I remember being like dead set on, I'm getting back in cause I'm getting back to my roots. I remember emailing every single like area scout that ever scouted me and was like, Hey, like the scouting report on me doesn't look good obviously, but like we're coming back, baby. We got a pocket radar and I have a discount nowadays <laughs> for that. So, uh, if you want the discount to pocket radar, you can, uh, email me or Go to my website, therobbyroshow.com, and just search or click the button discounts, and it's on there. Anyways, we've got a pocket radar. So then I was tracking again, right? You'll you'll see this common ground of like when I'm tracking and the 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 growth of of my my velocity when I'm intentional about the tracking. For me, it's just being diligent with this process and not just kind of flipping a coin and guessing like, oh, I guess we'll do this today. You know, hopefully this works and stuff like that. So. Then I got put into a really good opportunity. I, I, I changed my arm slot back over the top and uh, started, like I said, long toss, being athletic. And I got up to 96 in a bullpen, went to St. Louis, uh, got the opportunity to play in that organization, uh, signed as a free agent and went through three levels, ended into the fall league, ended with a big league camp invite the next year because I got all the way up to 99 miles an hour. <laughs> it was crazy, man. And just like the funny thing it was, was like there wasn't really anything like, I think one thing specifically, it was just like the freedom mentally for me, like knowing that I was doing the things that I believed in that worked and I was able to be myself. Um, that goes into like kind of a whole another conversation. But uh, I think it was just a mixture of all that mechanics were just dialed in because I wasn't really thinking mechanics. I was just thinking about like throwing and just having fun and being grateful for that opportunity. Getting released that first time was the best thing. And I'll say it till I'm blue in the face, the best thing for me, um, because it gave me that gratitude back and it gave me that joy back in the game. Cause like I've realized how fast it can be taken away. Um, so yeah, going. And then I, then the, the, Fall league was great. Was up to like ninety six. Um, put myself on the map to be in the show, and then elbow injury. And holy smokes, it's been a it's been a wild ride. Two thousand seventeen um, went to big league camp. Had my first big league camp. Velo was fine. I was three to five. Um, and then I got released by St. Louis uh, three days after I got uh, cut from big league camp. And then I went to be a starter where I was, you know, back to 90, 93. And then 2018, got some velo up, I would say, as a starter. I was up to 95, um, but I'd be sitting like 88, 92, 93 again. But I'd, I'd be able to kind of get back to that senior year mentality where I'd take a few pitches and be like, I'm going to throw it as hard as I can. Boom, that flash of five. Ended up getting signed by Texas um, in 2018. And... Uh, they were like, you, what do you want to do? I was like, I'll, I'll start. Cause I've always loved the starting role. Like that is just so fun to me, like the routine of it. 
And which was a mistake. I should have just been like, I'm a reliever, like one inning. Here we go. You want freaking upper cheddar cheese? Like, let's do it. Anyways, started, got another injury, blew up my lap. And then um, 2019 during the rehab into 2020, it was back up to 96, 97. Um, and then it's kind of been the same thing every year. When I prep for going to winter ball as a reliever, as a back end bullpen guy, um, I sit like 93, 95, touch a 96. And then when I'm prepping, like right now, I'm prepping to be a starter for this upcoming season. And I'm 90, 92, 93. I know what you're thinking. Rob, if you want to get to the show, man, you're probably not going to be doing it as a starter. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> I got nothing for you. But uh, there's a lot more to that. I didn't realize how long this was going to be. I really intended it to be like 20 minutes. I had to hit the camera back on because it, it took so long to record. Uh, 30 minute time cap. There's so much more to this too. Like so many little stories I have about velocity and my, my journey with it. But yeah, that was fun. Um, I'm probably going to include this on my, on my about page on my website. Um, like I said, I believe I gave you the link, but, um, just to give it to you absolute, it is the slash about, and that is going to conclude this podcast. I might do another one of these. I like doing these like journey things. Historically, I don't really like speaking about myself, but the goal of what everything I do is to provide value of what I've endured and experienced in my journey. So you don't have to go through everything that I had gone through, but that's the beauty of it. All right. Ebook, check it out on the site. If you become a member, you get a discount. If you're a member and you don't see anywhere where it's giving you a discount, therobbyroshow.com forward slash ask. Ask about it and I'll get you that. I love you guys. Um, God bless. And like I said, the Pocket Radar discount is also on my website. So Frost Gear Baseball, the t-shirt if you're watching this on YouTube, and then the PFP crown is Pitchers Only Apparel, both the discounts on my website. All right. Until next time, guys, much love.